The marvel of this series, Plan B, uh, three I recommend because it is um, the most complete, comprehensive, unflinching look. I've included Plan B 4.0 for um, the ability to see that the projections of 3.0 published in roughly 2006 remain consistent through the end of 2009 and then presumably through today as evidenced by this slide presentation 4.0. <coughs> um, the brilliance of the series is it's comprehensive, it's enormously dense, it's enormously authoritative uh, and complete. There are some inconsistencies in how it's presented that make it maddeningly hard to master and digest. Hence, these four or five slides in the very beginning here before you'll hear the soundtrack start um, that are you'll want to refute, refer to frequently as sort of a bedrock of what's being discussed here in terms of an actual plan. End of Start Loving's comments. A summary of Plan B 4.0 Mobilizing to Save Civilization A book by Lester R. Brown Overview A Civilization in Trouble Hunger on the Rise Soaring Food Prices How Did We Get Here? Geopolitics of Food Scarcity Looming Stresses Food, The Weak Link Failing States Tipping Points Time for Plan B Plan B Four main goals. Stabilizing population and eradicating poverty. Restoring the earth. Plan B budget. Climate action plan. Putting a price on carbon. A wartime mobilization. Pieces of the puzzle. Let's get to work. Hunger on the rise. World hunger and malnutrition were on the decline for much of the late 20th century. But after falling to 825 million in the mid-1990s the number of hungry people began to rise, reaching 915 million in 2008. In 2009 it jumped to over 1 billion. With a business-as-usual approach to agriculture, population, and energy, 1.2 billion or more people will be hungry by 2015. Soaring food prices. Mid-2006 to mid-2008, world grain and soybean prices roughly tripled. Global impact. But the poor were most affected. Poorest often spend 50-70% of income on food. For low-income people, in developing countries buying grain directly, if the price of grain triples, so does their grocery bill. Took worst economic crisis since Great Depression to ease prices, but they remain well above historical levels. How did we get here? Food price spikes in the past were event driven, for instance Indian monsoon failure, prices typically return to normal with the next harvest. This one is driven by unresolved long term trends limiting food supply and increasing demand. Supply constraints. Little unused arable land, loss of cropland to development and industry. Overpumped aquifers falling water tables, and over-allocated rivers limit irrigation expansion. Slowing growth in crop yields. Soils eroding, deserts expanding due to overgrazing, overplowing, deforestation. Growing demand. World population is increasing by 79 million annually. Some 3 billion people desire to move up the food chain and eat more grain-intensive livestock products. Food versus fuel, expanding by full production means that cars and people compete for crops. Food versus fuel. Rising price of oil. Has made it profitable to turn grain into fuel. US ethanol euphoria quickly doubled annual growth in global grain demand, raising food prices worldwide. The grain needed to fill an sub's 25 gallon tank with ethanol once could feed one person for an entire year. Geopolitics of food scarcity. Late 2007, food prices spiked even higher as grain exporters, including major players such as Vietnam, limited or banned exports, further tightening the world market. 
Climbing prices provoked riots and unrest in dozens of countries. Contributed to the fall of Haiti's government. Affluent food importers began buying or leasing large swaths of land abroad to grow food for themselves. A new response, farming abroad. Libya plans to farm wheat on 100,000 hectares, 250,000 acres, in Ukraine. South Korea signed deals to grow wheat on 690,000 hectares in Sudan. Chinese firm secured 2.8 million hectares in Democratic Republic of the Congo for palm oil. In all, some 50 large agreements worth dollar sign 20-30 billion are being pursued. Potential for conflict. Land often acquired in impoverished, hungry countries, for instance Sudan and Ethiopia. Deals lack transparency, local farmers left out. Some countries plan to bring foreign farm workers. May fuel public outrage further. Even these attempts to secure food supplies may prove futile unless the world addresses the long-term trends and looming stresses threatening food security. Looming stresses. Peak oil. Water shortages. Climate change. Foreshadow further food production constraints price rises, and increased political unrest unless dealt with. Peak oil. The 20 largest oil fields were discovered between 1917 and 1979. Since 1981, oil extraction has exceeded new discoveries by a widening margin. Most of the easily recovered oil is already pumped. Once oil production turns downward, countries will compete for a shrinking supply. It will be far more difficult to expand energy-intensive agricultural production when the price of oil is rising and the supply is declining. Water shortages. Between 1950 and 2000, world water use tripled. Some 70% of water use is for irrigation. Over-extraction is leading to disappearing lakes and rivers failing to reach the sea. Aquifer depletion is causing water tables to fall and wells to go dry. 175 million Indians. 130 million Chinese are fed with grain produced by overpumping. Since the overpumping of aquifers is occurring in many countries more or less simultaneously, the depletion of aquifers and the resulting harvest cutbacks could come at roughly the same time, creating potentially unmanageable food scarcity. A dramatic example, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has heavily subsidized wheat production and as a result has been self-sufficient for more than 20 years. Used oil drilling technology to tap a non-replenishable aquifer to irrigate the desert. In early 2008, announced the aquifer was largely depleted and wheat production would be phased out entirely by 2016. Will be importing nearly all the grain needed to feed its 30 million people. Saudi Arabia is the first country to publicly project how overpumping will shrink its grain harvest. Climate change. Since start of industrial revolution, carbon dioxide, CO2, in the atmosphere has risen from 277 parts per million to 387 parts per million. In 2008, 7.9 billion tons of carbon were emitted from burning fossil fuels, coal, oil, natural gas, Emissions from deforestation totaled 1.5 billion tons of carbon that year. Electricity generation and transportation are the largest sources of CO2 emissions, with coal-fired power plants the biggest culprit. As CO2 accumulates, global temperature rises. Ice melting. Losing our reservoirs in the sky. Mountain glaciers rapidly disappearing worldwide. Himalayan and Tibetan King He Plateau glaciers sustain the major rivers of Asia during the dry season, providing critical irrigation water for agriculture. If melting, 
continues at current rates, rivers like the Yellow, Yangtze, Ganges, and Indus could become seasonal, causing wheat and rice harvests to plummet. Ice melting. Rising seas. Massive Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets are melting at accelerating rates. Together hold enough water to raise sea level 12 meters, 39 feet. A 10 meter rise in sea level today would inundate coastal areas home to more than 600 million people. The risk is that climate change could spiral out of control, making it impossible to arrest trends such as rising temperatures, ice melting, and rising seas, threatening food security, and creating hundreds of millions of climate refugees. Food, the weak link. Food shortages led to collapse of Sumerian, Mayan, and many other early civilizations. Could food be the weak link for our 21st century global civilization? We are failing to reverse trends and are mining food security while adding new stresses. Accumulating problems and their consequences may overwhelm more and more governments, accelerating spread of state failure. Failing states. States fail when governments lose control of part or all of their territory and can no longer ensure their people's security. Rapidly growing populations, rising hunger and poverty, resource depletion. And political stresses are pushing more countries such as Afghanistan, Haiti, and Sudan towards state failure each year, decreasing stability. How many failing states before our global civilization begins to unravel? Tipping points. Can we address the root causes of rising food insecurity and state failure in time to avoid global political instability? Can we halt deforestation before the Amazon rainforest dries out, becoming vulnerable to fire? Can we close coal-fired power plants fast enough to avoid losing the Greenland and West Antarctic ice sheets? Can we cut carbon emissions quickly enough to keep temperature from spiraling out of control? Business as usual is not working, it's time for Plan B. Plan B, four main goals. Stabilizing population. Eradicating poverty. Restoring the Earth's natural support systems. Stabilizing climate. Stabilizing population and eradicating poverty. Universal primary education. Eradication of adult illiteracy. School lunch programs for 44 poorest countries. Assistance to preschool children and pregnant women in 44 poorest countries. Reproductive health care and family planning services. Total additional annual cost equals $77 billion. Restoring the earth. Protecting and restoring forests. Conserving and rebuilding soils. Protecting biodiversity. Restoring fisheries. Stabilizing water tables. Planting trees to sequester carbon. Total additional annual cost equals $110 billion. Plan B budget. Additional. Global annual expenditure needed. Basic social goals $77 billion. Restoring the earth $110 billion. Total plan B budget $187 billion. Perspective. This equals just one-eighth of annual world military spending. Climate action plan. Three components. Raising energy efficiency and restructuring transportation. Replacing fossil fuels with renewables. Ending net deforestation and planting trees to sequester carbon. To prevent global atmospheric CO2 concentrations from exceeding 400 parts per million, minimizing future temperature rise. Raising energy efficiency. Buildings. Retrofits with better insulation and more efficient appliances can cut energy use 20-50%. Lighting. A worldwide switch to highly efficient home, office, industrial, and street lighting would cut electricity use 12%, equivalent to closing 705 of the world's 2,670 coal-fired power plants. Appliances. Japan's top runner program uses today's most efficient appliances to set tomorrow's standards, for instance helped boost computer efficiency by 99%. Raising energy efficiency. Industry. Improving manufacturing efficiency for carbon emissions heavyweights, chemicals, petrochemicals, steel, and cement, offers major opportunities to curb energy demand 